This uh, presentation is about the investigation of a possible cause of a spurious coolant level error in a 2007 Saturn ion and possible solutions. Okay, before we start, let's be clear on one point. I am not a professional mechanic. I am a hobbyist. Uh, everything I say here should be taken with a grain of salt. If you have any questions, you should consult a professional mechanic. Uh, this work was done on a 2007 Saturn ion. I suspect, however, that the findings in this video may apply to a number of cars in the GM family which have the Ecotech engine. An exception uh, might be the Chevy Cobalt. When I cruise the junkyards, getting parts for, for to fix my car, uh, the Chevy Cobalt did not appear to have a, a uh, level gauge, a fluid level gauge, as part of its surge tank. So here's the error. Uh, you're driving down the road, and out of the blue you hear some bells and chimes, and then the word coolant appears on your instrument cluster. Uh, what the car is telling you is that it thinks that you have a low level of antifreeze in your surge or your expansion tank that's attached to your cooling system. Uh, the first thing you should do is actually check physically the level of coolant in that surge tank. If it's low, you have a, a problem which needs to be solved um, regarding loss of coolant. Uh, this video does not discuss that issue. Uh, this video discusses uh, what do you do next when you see that the level of coolant is normal in the surge tank. Note also on the dashboard, the check engine light has not come on. Uh, this error is not logged by the engine computer. Uh, this will not this error will not cause you to fail your emissions testing if your state has that sort of testing program. You could, if you want, you could, if you wanted to, simply ignore this error once you have ascertained that your coolant level is normal. I got a real clue to the cause of this problem in my car one day. I was in my driveway with the car at idle. I was checking out a thermostat issue when after about five minutes, of uh, the car just sitting at idle, the uh, that error light went on. I then drove the car around the neighborhood for five minutes and the light went off. And I think we'll see as we analyze this problem that that behavior can be explained. And this is the new one. I've already done this job. I'm going over this thing to give you an idea of how to work on this. And if we go into higher power here, you can see right down there is the wiring harness on the um, the gauge which measures the level of the antifreeze. That gauge is easy to remove uh, in the following way. Take your thumb as so. Or in this case my index finger and it pops right out. Uh, here is a better demonstration of how to remove the wiring harness from the surge tank. To uh, take off the wiring harness is pretty straightforward. Simply use your thumb and just grab it, this uh, lever up here. Get, get it past the notch and just work it out. And it comes right off. Now if you do break this thing somehow, taking it off, don't panic. You can buy a and use one at any junkyard um, for about seven or eight dollars and you can use the wiring harness from a Saturn Ion or a Chevy Malibu. They're the same thing. Okay, I've taken off the uh, surge tank. This is my old surge tank now obviously and using a, a plain old hacksaw I saw the thing in the two pieces and uh, this is the surge tank 
after it was cleaned out with um, simple green, that nice detergent. And what you see is, uh, number one, a lot of scum still left inside that tank that doesn't come out very easily. But you also see on your left hand side a gauge um, which depends upon that green float moving up and down based upon the level of the antifreeze. Okay, let's see how this uh, gauge actually works. Here's my voltmeter. It's been turned to the logic circuit, which means there should be a buzzer when the circuit's completed. And you can hear it quite easily. Now let's hook it up to our gauge and see what happens. Okay, there's no sound, but as we raise the float, we get the circuit's been closed. And that's all there is to it. So how does this uh, float attach the gauge? Well, it seems like it's not attached to it at all. It's, it's just a ring around the central part of the gauge and the float just comes right out and it's easily detached. Now, what kind of float is this? You may have noticed there was no mechanical connection between the float and the gauge itself. As you can see from this picture, uh, this is a ring magnet. Um, you can see that, that dark black uh, circle inside the uh, float. That's the magnet. And you can see that the, uh, the uh, paper clip is held to that magnet quite firmly. That magnet, as it moves up and down the gauge, uh, will cause uh, two wires to open or close their contacts. Um, I can hear a tiny click uh, if I listen very carefully as I move the magnet up and down the, uh, the gauge. So this is a very clever arrangement. It requires no mechanical connection uh, of the float to the gauge, uh, thus reducing, I think, greatly the chance that the float could stick. So everything about the gauge appears to be working properly uh, without much chance of the float sticking. The question arises, does the float actually float? So let's try the experiment. This is a little cup of water, and we put the float into it. And that little baby just sinks in water. Okay, let's try another test. This is going to be a Dexcool 50-50 pre-diluted. And let's see if this float will float. And the float does float in the next in the next cool. Note though that even though it's floating, it floats barely. Um, this uh, float does not have much buoyancy uh, in the Dexcool antifreeze. Now, what is Dexcool? Well, it's a 50/50 mixture of um, ethylene glycol and water. Uh, here is a chart. I got this data from the internet which shows the specific gravity of ethylene glycol at a 50-50 mix with water at different temperatures. And uh, the bottom uh, of the y-axis is 1 and that's the, the, that is the value for water. And the top of the chart is 1.1. That is the specific gravity for um, essentially Dexcool um, at a 50-50 mix at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Moving rightward on the graph, uh, with increasing temperature, there's a progressive fall of the specific gravity of the Dexcool mixture. Uh, engines run normally at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, but may run much warmer under uh, warm conditions easily achieving temperatures above 200 degrees um, on a hot summer's day under load. It's easy to see that at some point the specific gravity of the dex cool could become uh, too low to support this float. So how warm does your car run? Well here are some shots from my dashboard showing my temperature gauge with the superimposed temperatures as reported by my OBD2 reader. And it's easy to see that even 
with the gauge only halfway up, you're well over the boiling point of water, and you could easily reach some of the higher temperatures like 220 or 240 on a hot day of driving. So after all this work, what is the conclusion? Well, I think it's most likely that the float doesn't float and that the erroneous signal coming from the surge tank is because the float rides too low in the antifreeze. Why this is happening, um, it's speculative. Uh, maybe salts have become encrusted on the float, increasing its weight. Maybe over time, the polymer uh, that composes the float has undergone physical changes, has lost mass or volume, and no longer has enough mass or enough volume to float the magnet. In any event, uh, this does suggest that attempts to clean the tank out to, quote, unstick, unquote, the float uh, are going to be unsuccessful. So what's the best way to solve this problem? Well, uh, I think the cheapest way to do this, if all you want to do is turn that coolant error light off, is to get a paper clip with the wire cutters, get a small loop of wire like that on the paper clip, and then simply use this to jumper the switch. And there you have it. We can test to make sure that's a good circuit with our uh, circuit tester again on the, log on the logic setting. And we have a good connection. You can then just tape this over with some black tape and you're done. Now, on the car, you'll find uh, there's enough room for you to work on the car to do this repair right on the car. You don't have to pull the tank out to put that jumper into the wiring harness. Now, if you're paranoid, I want to do the job right. You'll have to empty the antifreeze, pull the tank out, and change the tank, and the tanks are expensive. But if you, if you do that, I would advise you to do your thermostat at the same time and also to change your antifreeze, which probably both need to be done. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found this instructive. Uh, I found the examination of this problem to be both uh, ins instructive and fun, and I enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoyed it too.